hello and welcome to the Immigrant Real Estate Podcast with myself, Christina, and my guest here, Justin, how do you say your last name? Chamness. 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 It's like, it's like Loch Ness, like the Loch Ness Monster. Have you heard of that? <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah, it's like the Loch Ness, except it's Chamness. Chamness. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, Justin, and um, we hope to find from you a couple of things about uh, real estate. If, let's say, I'm new immigrant here in this beautiful country of possibilities, and I don't know much. I don't know where to start. I I wonder about some... some um, um, notions that I could, you know, I don't know. I, I was just uh, wondering earlier, how about what's a title company? What's a title company doing? Yeah, yeah, the, it, it can feel really overwhelming. It can, I, I, I'm certain. Um, being an immigrant, um, coming here, I have lived here, I was born here, so I'm familiar with things. But if you're an immigrant coming here, you're unfamiliar with things and it can feel overwhelming. I really do understand that. And there is a, it really isn't very complicated though. It's not okay. too complicated. So it, cool. It's, it's quite simple and it, it is very similar here in the United States as it is in many other places around the world. Uh, but I, I'll describe a little bit. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was wondering, do you think so? It's similar. I mean, do you think that, for instance, if you go to Romania, you, you, it would be easy to go around buying the property <laughs> there? <laughs> I uh, you know, I wonder too. I don't know much about Romania, um, and I'd like to know more. Uh, from what I hear, it's a wonderful place. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I've, I've got some friends from all around the globe. I, I, I do some one-on-one -on -one coaching with folks, and I've got some friends in that in that club there that that uh, are from all around the world, some different places. And uh, and and it, it amazes me some of the places that that I'm so completely unaware of how things work there. And and we could flip the roles though. So if you're an immigrant coming here then you may feel completely unaware of how things work here. Now, uh, and, and in the United States, it doesn't always work the same way as every other country. Sure, there, there is some similarities, especially uh, in the Western Hemisphere over here. But um, yeah, so it can be overwhelming. That's yeah. for sure. So could you map a little bit of a path? Like, what is it? How is it to buy a property here? Um, yeah, that's a great question. And the, the answer is pretty simple, but I'm going to give you a little bit longer answer, uh, <laughs> if that's okay. The, um, the fact is, is a lot of folks probably wonder, can I, as a, an immigrant here, let's say, let's say my, my immigration isn't complete yet. Um, I've, I've got permission to be here, um, and I'm, I want to maybe buy a home here but I'm still in the process of, of becoming a citizen. In other words, I'm maybe, maybe not even a citizen yet of the United States. Can I buy property here? Can I own a home here? And the answer is yes, you can. Yeah, um, there is no law in the United States that says that an immigrant or a, or a non-citizen cannot buy a home. There, there's no law that says that. So it, it, that's great news. So if you are coming to the United States and you want to own a home, you can. Now, here's an interesting, here's an interesting fact. You want to hear an interesting fact? Yes, I would like to hear an interesting fact. <laughs> um, it, if you are an immigrant or you're a non-citizen uh, at this moment, you can buy a home here. Um, now, I think it's interesting that if Can I take a loan? To buy Say a that home. again. Can I take a loan to buy a home? You know, when you go to get a mortgage to buy a home as an immigrant, they're going to ask you for a couple things. They're going to ask you to, for your green card, and they're going to ask you for your social security number. <laughs> and for uh, credit. And, and they're going to check your credit, right? And so the tax returns. <laughs> 
Yeah, the tax returns, you know, honestly, I don't know how that works. I really don't. So um, that might be a, a great question for a guy that does mortgages. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm not sure about that. But you can buy a home, you can get a mortgage for it. And that is that is if you're a legal immigrant. Mm -hmm. Now, even if you are an illegal immigrant, can you buy a home here? Okay. You can. <laughs> you can. Yeah, I see. Yeah, there is no law that says that you cannot buy a piece of property here to li you live in or whatever. Now, now the fact that you're here living in it may be an issue on some other levels, but mm -hmm. the fact that you, you so what I'm getting at is is you can buy a property here no matter what what process, what stage in the process of immigration you may be in, it's okay, okay. you can buy a home here. Yeah, yeah. so that's so, what we Go ahead. That's a great that's a great place to start, you know, just to know that who anyone could could buy a property here, whether they're uh, immigrants or now immigrants, or basically yeah. there's no law to pre to prevent that. But let's say I'm an immigrant. I got here a great job here at um, Google, and I have a great uh, salary. But I don't have any credit. I don't know what this is about. And I go to a broker, and they ask me for two years tax returns and uh, stuff like that. And I'm like, uh, Do I really need that? And that actually happened to me. I went to one, and they said, Yes, you need this, and then you need the credit, and like oh i probably have great credit because i have nothing i didn't yeah. know you could have like no credit <laughs> right but let's say i'm this immigrant what can you describe what the process of buying a home would be for me let's say i have some cash maybe i have like ten thousand dollars in cash what would you suggest i do yes i i that's a great question and thank you for asking it christina what there's a couple things that you can do here maybe even more than a couple you can you can certainly rent something until you build some credit and you build credit by perhaps getting some small credit cards and paying them off every month um something like that can establish credit fairly quickly okay now you can do something like that while you're renting an apartment or a house or, or a condo or something someplace that, that that's one option. Okay. But if you, if you want to get into a home more quickly, then going to get a mortgage is not going to work because like you were saying, there's no credit there. Yeah. And so they're, they're not going to give you a home loan to buy a home here. But so even though you can buy a home here, getting that money. Okay. That's tough that you said in the, in the example, you have a little cash, Okay, if you have a little cash and you have no credit, how do you get into a home as an immigrant here in the United States? Yeah. And the answer is really simple. It's called lease purchase. Have you so, heard of that? Uh, well, I heard of more solutions myself. Yes, I heard about lease option too. But let's say I'm still that uh, new immigrant with a job that doesn't actually sure. know much about real estate but knows more about technology and other things like that and i've heard of this how you can buy a house with nothing down and whatever or rent to own or whatever yeah. and I, like an immigrant at least for me i like owning my own home you know so maybe there are others like me as well being like I don't want all my rent to just go in the air. I would like eventually to to own the home I'm yeah. renting. So yeah. you're the same. Tell me more about this lot, lease yeah. option. Is it what yeah. I'm saying with rent to own? Yeah, th that's exactly right. And I and I know <laughs> when I said, "Have you heard of that?" <laughs> what I meant, Christina. I know you know a lot about a lot of the stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe maybe probably more than me, but about a lot of it. Um, and, but what I meant was, is that, uh, you know, have you guys talked about this much on, on the podcast up to this point? And, and I, I cause I didn't know how no. much this had been shared. No. Before. Okay. You, tell, you tell, tell us more about this. <laughs> Great. This here, Justin, please. All right. Thank you. Uh, lease purchase is the same as rent to own. Okay. 
And it's also sometimes called a lease option or sometimes called a lease with option to buy. So, you know, all of those different phrases mean the same thing. It is a rent to own type situation. Now, how do you find a rent to own house? Well, there's some real easy ways to find a rent to own house. Many times, however, these homes are not just listed out there. Sometimes they are, but they're not just listed out there on craigslist.com or Facebook marketplace or some of these big you know, tech trade, you know, trade sites where you can find properties for rent. Uh, many times you're not going to find them there. Uh, there's right. ways to go about finding these properties, but basically what it is, is you're getting a property owner to agree to lease you the property. And then at the end of, let's say 18 months, 24 months, 36 months, you have had plenty of time to establish more credit like we were talking before yeah and now you have more credit so that you can get the loan to buy the home okay. so you rent it for you know a set amount of time 12 18 24 36 months and then you buy the home at that point at a predetermined price so okay. when you move in you know what the rent's going to be and you know what the purchase price is going to be all that time later when you're ready to buy. Does that make sense what I'm saying? That sounds great. But my question now is, so if I go to Zillow, let's say, because I like Zillow, there's so many things there. And I look around, I only see houses that are listed by brokers or uh, real estate agents. So if I call them, would they do that for me? do that kind of contract for me excuse me uh yes it, they often are equipped with the ability to work with you on an offer like this now i am not a realtor however yeah. um i i am familiar with with realtors and i have many realtor buddies <laughs> okay so i i know a little bit about realtors and i have heard directly from them that if you were to call, let's say an ad that says for rent and you ask them, Hey, I'm interested in owning and I want to rent for a while, 12 months, maybe, maybe 24, maybe 36, depends on how much time you need. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then you, you ask them, Hey, I want to rent for a certain period of time, a long lease. I'm a good tenant, but I would like, you to see if the homeowner would be willing to sell the house to me at the end of that time at a certain fair market price okay okay so then the realtor many times will say you know let me ask the homeowner okay. and and they'll go back and they'll ask the homeowner and then they'll come back to the table with a yes a no or a maybe so why would an, uh, an owner get into that if they have a property that they have um, rent coming in so there's some cash flow there why would an owner choose to sell that uh, house to in such a contract eventually yes there are probably as many reasons as there are homeowners however some of the common reasons that I have experienced is that they are not always in as good financial condition as you may suspect. Okay. Uh, many of them are renting the property out because they have failed at trying to sell the property. <laughs> All, All right. right. And many of them are also what I call tired landlords. So yes, they're renting the property out, but they've owned this property for 12 years and okay. they've had, they've had 14 different renters in 12 years. Mm -hmm. And this is the 16th time they've had to go in and fix something this okay. year. And they're really tired. Okay. And so they also have a, a dozen other properties and they're trying to get rid of some of these, but, they're not sure about selling it just yet. 
But if the offer was made, they would say yes. A lot of times these folks are not, they don't even consider it a possibility until you ask. There's a, there's a great power in asking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. So uh, you say the realtors would be, could be uh, open to the question. The homeowner could be open to it. Is there any, anything else I can add to that question to entice the homeowner more like, maintenance or something can i have some some part of that rent going toward the uh purchasing the house or the down payment or anything like that yeah. what's the down payment by the way yes um those are all great questions and a, a down payment would be money that you put down when the contract is negotiated and signed and the agreement is made and then you, the keys are exchanged and you move in. And that down payment would be coming off of the purchase price that you agree upon where when, when you buy the home in 24 or 36 months, wh whatever time frame it is, when you buy the home, you buy it for that purchase price minus what your down payment was. Now I, I, I would like to encourage you though, that many times, you can do a rent to own deal with a homeowner without having any down payment whatsoever. Okay. Usually a one month's deposit and one and the first month's rent is all that's really required to do this many, many times. So then why are all these people renting stuff and not <laughs> rent buying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. And, and, and I'm glad you asked me that because I often wonder that myself. I, okay. I really don't know why this isn't done more frequently, but it certainly should be because it's an excellent way to get your foot in the door when you can't get the loan. And yeah. I, I, I know that you, you mentioned um, the, the payment every month. Does yeah. any of that go towards the purchase the price. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and then you, you asked about down payment and it goes towards the purchase price. And you, you talked about maintenance. Okay. Here's the thing about real estate. Absolutely everything in real estate in the United States is negotiable. 100% of it. Okay. So if you want some of your monthly rent, 50 or a hundred dollars or 150 or, or 5% of it or whatever, what have you, whatever you want, you can negotiate for when dealing with the homeowner directly or through the realtor. It, it, it's, it's really negotiable. All of it is. So if you want to take on some of the maintenance of the home to make it more appealing to the homeowner, Mm -hmm. then you can, I, I would recommend taking on the first $250 of any incident mm -hmm. that would, that would limit you to $250. If the dishwasher breaks, um, it, it, it would limit you to $250 exp expense. If the toilet starts running all night long, you know, we've had that happen everybody, right. Where the toilet just won't quit, you know? Yeah. So, you know, you're going to be a blessing to the homeowner. I see that, yeah. Yes, but at the same time, if the roof goes exactly. bad. I think you, you read know. my mind. What happened if the roof happens? Something right, happens. if the roof blows off in a storm, right, yeah. and hopefully it doesn't happen, then you're going to be able to say, hey, Mr. Homeowner, you're going to have to come in and help out on this. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I got 250 bucks for it, but the rest is on you, sir. Okay. <laughs> uh, in the same way with anything over two hundred fifty dollars, yeah. that's how I would recommend setting that up. If you if you want to, but it's negotiable. But what if, let's say, at the end of a year and a half or so, I realize actually this is not the house I would like to live in? Do I really have to to buy it? Oh yeah, great question. No. It, two things here. The, the homeowner does have to sell it to you. Okay. <laughs> he, it's not optional for the homeowner. Once he decides to do this deal with you, then he's basically agreeing to it and saying, I'm good. I'm good for the, the whole time. 
and I'm agreeing to sell to you at the end of the term, and that's what I'm going to do, and I'm locking myself in. Now, the, the buyer, though, uh, they are not locked in. They have an option to buy it, and all of, the, all of the negotiated benefits along the way, but if they choose, let's say they don't like the house. Let's say, yeah. let's say it's ugly. Uh, you know, yeah. they thought it was pretty. Let's what? say you don't like the neighborhood yeah. you yeah. went to or something. Yeah. yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe the neighborhood's bad. Maybe there's some mean little kids there. I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. whatever it is, they don't like the property and they decide they don't want to go ahead and buy the property. They have every right to move out and do something different with their lives. Now, I will say there is a risk in this, though. Okay. What's the risk? Well, the risk is if you have put down a down payment yeah, and then later you decide to move out, you may not get that down payment back. Okay. Well, and, it, and in most cases, probably not. So you want to be sure that you're making a quality decision before you go and do this. You want to know you want to live there. Okay. 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 I get that. Yeah, the thing is that something happened to us. We have a cat and we love our cat. And we had the neighbor that actually was trapping the cat and we had to move because of the neighbor. He would just not give up on trapping our cats, which is part of the family. <laughs> so, yeah. I know, interesting, but- They get, they get into your heart. Move. Um, and and something else that also happened to us we actually at some point had an owner that kind of he was like well and maybe after two years and whatever you buy the house but i realized now that he was probably he heard something he, he didn't have um a broker or a realtor or whatever a, a real estate agent or something to work with it was just himself and he mentioned this owning after two years but the contract initially was just a, a lease now my question is if i as a renter find out more about this thing and i find an owner who doesn't actually know where can i find the contract you said you're mentoring people can someone come yes. to you and you can help them with the contract or does it have to be a realtor or how is this done? Yes. Um, a realtor should be able to help you if there is a realtor involved. So if the seller has a realtor or the homeowner, they, they don't have one. Okay. If they do, then the realtor should be able to, if they don't, then there are places that you can find the agreements. Uh, you could contact me. Um, <laughs> certainly, you could visit the website uh, and get a, a schedule an appointment or whatever you want. But I give that stuff away. I do. Um, however, I'm not the only place you can get it. So you can get it. Uh, it it's two agreements. It's a lease agreement, which is just a rental agreement. Mm -hmm. And it's an option to purchase agreement, which oh. is a very, I know it sounds kind of scary. But it's a very simple, simple agreement. It's a one page, uh, typically, uh, maybe two, but real simple and uh, real easy to fill out and all of that. So you could do this on your own without the help of a realtor if you just have those two documents. Now, I do recommend that you get a lease agreement that you like and that is good for your area and how you may find one of those is by going to the title company or asking a title company and <laughs> we, what's that title company <laughs> justin uh, okay in, say i don't know anything that you know that's kind of a it's a great question because in the united states of course there's 50 states here so everyone is different and and everyone operates every different one operates a little differently so in some states the real estate closing or settling, okay, when I say settling, I mean it is a third party. It's not the, it's not the homeowner and it's not the buyer. It's a, it's a licensed and, and registered with the state third party company that oversees 
the transfer of the funds and the filling out of the paperwork and the deeds. Okay. Fi recording okay. the deeds. And so they, they are the settling company. They settle the bill at the, when everything's ready to go and close, they do the closing, so to speak. Okay. So they now, are doing the closing. Where yeah. do I find them? So I go to them, knock on the door and they, yeah. they help me with this. Well, it depends on what state you live in. Uh, and, and, and I say that because in some states it's called a title company in some states it's called a title and escrow company. And in some states it's called a closing attorney. Um, and so okay. it, depending on what state you live in and you can Google it and you can, and you'll find out, you know, who to, who, you know, like, do I need a closing attorney or title company in California okay. and you'll, you'll Google it and you'll find out your particular state. But then it's just as simple as Googling title company mm -hmm. in Oakland, California, and you'll find all of the different title companies in Oakland, California, call one or two and just ask them, say, hey, I would like to have, I'm, I'm, I'm new here and I'm trying to rent a place and I need a, a lease agreement that's good for our area here. Can you share one with me through email? And most of the time, they are more than willing to share those kind of documents with folks. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's how you can get one. You may even be able to ask them if they have an option to purchase agreement and have them send that to you at the same time. That's cool. Yeah. So that's so interesting. See, you're such a wealth of information. So, and I can use the same company or similar company when the time comes to buy, or do I really need uh, a realtor there? Um, yes, that's a great point. You, you could use the same title company or title and escrow company or closing attorney okay. you, could, you, you could use you could use that same one to close the deal or be the settler and closer when you go to buy it and okay. th so they would be the ones that would settle the debts and make sure the money's transferred to the right places and they would fill out the paperwork properly and they would be the one recording your name on the title of the home you know on the deed so uh yeah you could definitely build that relationship there because they could be your friend for a long time. I see. So this is so much, um, so much information and I, I have tons of, tons of more questions about this, but um, before we, we kind of get close to the time here, I, I would really like to know how people can reach you. If you have a, an email, a website, where do, the, where do yeah. people find you? Yeah, absolutely. You can call me at 816-875-6961. Okay, I'll say, I'll, say, I'll say it one more time. <laughs> exactly, you need to say it slower. <laughs> okay, you can call me directly. And, yes. if, and I will call you back if I do not pick up directly. But 816, area code, 816-875-6961. Or you could visit my website at realestatewholesalersclub.com. <laughs> oh, that's a, great, that's a great place. Real uh, Estate Wholesalers uh, Club. Yeah, that's great. Hey, I've had so much fun, Christina. I, <laughs> I, I'm sorry I talked way too much here today. I, I feel like I just you get me excited about talking about these things. And I, I love I, 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 I just to ask you more. But probably I would love to invite you some other time and get into into more questions about how what's up with, with this real estate clubs how how do you actually close the deal what's going on so i would really like to see you again and um, thank you so much for being here with us for the immigrant real estate podcast thank you thank you bye. thank you <laughs> bye bye thank you shut up Hey, thanks for watching, but don't forget to post, introduce yourself, tag a friend, like us, leave a comment, subscribe, share this video, just do something. Don't just sit there. There's all that money out there. You got to get going, get in motion. This is motion real estate.